Hi, and welcome back to my vlog. This is the second one that I do. I hope that you enjoyed the first one. Uh, I'm here with my crew again. They're doing an amazing job as they did before. I'd like to thank them. And um, my name is Rick Carrillo. I pastor New Life Church in Orange City, Florida. If you would like to visit our website, uh, you can go to where our website should be showing up over my head right now. And if you want to go to our Facebook page, uh, there it is also. So uh, let's get started. I told you last week we spoke on the Holy Spirit. We were speaking on why church or why not church. Why do people go to church? Why do people stop going to church? Uh, why do people get spooked at church? Why do they get betrayed? There's betrayal. There's all kinds of things that could keep people from going to church if they've already experienced it. And then there's other things where people maybe have not gone to church and, uh, and, and they've heard things. So I'd like to clear a few of those things up. We, we spoke on the Holy Spirit last week or the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, which we didn't use the word ghost as much. Uh, it's actually the word spirit, so I didn't want to spook you. But um, we're going to talk about praise and worship today. This one is very controversial because so many different churches and so many different ministries worship differently. So who's right? Who's wrong? Who's better? Who's worse? We don't know. So let's look at the word. And first of all, I'm going to start off by letting you know why we worship here at New Life the way that we do. But stick with me because it's not the only way and it's not necessarily the right way or the better way. Uh, I should say the better way uh, of other churches. One of the things about worship um, that we do as Christians sometimes, which we really need to stop doing, is if we worship a certain way and another church doesn't, let's say we jump, we, we clap our hands, uh, we dance around, uh, we yell, we scream, whatever, you know, we call it charismatic, we call it Pentecostal, whatever it may be. And then you have a church that opens hymnals and they have a, a, an organ behind them. And, uh, and then we claim to be doing worship better than they, or we say that we're charismatic with our heads up high and our chest pumped out, like we have something better than they do. But that's not the truth. The truth is there's a church for everyone. And as long as we worship in spirit and in truth, God is receiving our worship. But let's go through this uh, uh, fairly quickly. Uh, why do we worship the way that we do here? Well, the simple answer to that is because God asked for it. God calls the shots. He's Lord. You cannot say no Lord because then he ceases to be Lord. The longest book in the Bible is about worship. Uh, the book of Psalms. And in Psalms 150, which is may be some familiar to some of you, Psalm 150 verses one through six reads like this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with sounding of trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with a timbrel and a dancing. Praise him with the strings and a pipe. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, you see there, he adds all these musical instruments and he has all these different things uh, that he puts there. And that kind of tells us, okay, uh, having a band and musical instruments and, and, and those kind of things is actually a, a, a good thing according to Psalms 150. But it says, praise the Lord. This word praise... Halal, where we get the the where we get the word hallelujah from. Listen to listen to this uh, a definition of halal. It's to shine, hence to make a show, <laughs> to boast, and thus to be clamorously foolish, to rave, whoo, whoo, to celebrate. All right? How many of you go to church where the worship is like a rave? I don't know. I've never been to a rave, but I, I think I've seen some of it or a mosh pit or something like that in church. Uh, we're not that uh, uh, crazy or that radical on that side. But look at what it says to praise. It's, it's to make a show, to boast, to, clam to be clamorously foolish, to celebrate. We should be celebrating uh, God and what he's done for us. We do this with other things we enjoy. You know, we just yesterday watched the Super Bowl and we were rooting for one team or the other. And when something happened, we would scream and clap and shout. And so, you know, we do this with soccer. Soccer is a big one. People really love to celebrate that. So why wouldn't we do it to celebrate what God has done in our lives? Number two, because praise is my purpose. We worship God because it brings pleasure to him. Church is not all just for you. Church is for him also. 
You should come to church not only to receive what God has for you that day, but to be able to bring praise and worship to Him. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him. Declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. He called me out of darkness. I was running the streets. I was not a good person as a teenager. And June 21st, 1987, he saved me and pulled me out of that lifestyle. I have much to be grateful for and much to declare praises to him about. You should also. The next one is for who, for who he is. Wow, who is he? Those of us uh, uh, who know who he is in their lives understand that he is the Lord. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. He is my everything. In Psalms 145, 3, it says, Great is the Lord and most worthy of, his, of, our, of our praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Psalm 48, 1, it repeats again, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Psalm 96, 4, For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared or respected highly above all gods. We should be worshiping him because he's great. For what he's done. Worship him for what he's done. What has he done for you? How much has he forgiven you? How much did he forgive you yesterday? How much is he going to forgive you for what you've done today? And how much is he going to forgive you for what's coming in the future? How much is he going to forgive you? How much does he love us? He sent his only begotten son. Man, he, did the, he paid the ultimate, ultimate price. He has done much. Listen to this. This is why I worship the Lord. In North Carolina, there's a military camp, Camp Lejeune. And it is really close to the highway. The fighter planes go over the highway sometimes, and it scares the drivers because of the noise and the rumble. So the, the military camp, Camp Lejeune, decided to put a sign up by the highway to warn people about the noise. And this is what it says. Pardon the noise. It is the sound of freedom. <laughs> if you come to our, cho our church, or you know, there's churches that are more radical and more charismatic than we are, and there's churches that are not. But if you come here and you find it loud, and you find us a little clamorous, it's because it's the sound of freedom. It's the sound of we've been forgiven much. We've been, uh, 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 you know, delivered from much. So much we give back to him through our praise and through our worship. Luke 19, 37 through 40, in the Message Bible, it says, the whole crowd of disciples burst into enthusiastic praise over all the mighty works they had witnessed. Some Pharisees from the crowd told him, teacher, get your disciples under control. But he said, if they kept quiet, the stones would do it for them, shouting praise. The whole crowd of disciples burst into enthusiastic praise over all the mighty works that they had witnessed. We have witnessed some mighty works in our lives. We should be bursting into praise and worship. The next one is because worship changes everything. Psalms 38, 3 says, I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and he saved me from my enemies. You want to send your enemies on, on the run? You want to tell the devil, which, by the way, we'll be talking about the devil next week. Don't miss that one. And you want to send him on the, uh, uh, you know, with his tail between his legs and running away from you? Then praise God. Praise the Lord. Submit to God and praise him. And the, and the devil will have no part of you. So most of the time we cannot control what is happening around us, but we can control what is happening in us by worshiping. We can't control the circumstances sometimes. Sometimes this world just beats us up. Sometimes there's bad relationships and sometimes there's betrayal and sometimes there's unhappiness and sometimes, you know, there's just a lack of money and, and, and the need of this and the other. But you know what? Those circumstances uh, uh, don't change anything when you're worshiping. Most of the time, we cannot control what is happening around us, but we can control what is happen happening in us through our worship. So that's kind of who we are in new life. And, and, you know, it may have sounded like we jump and scream and yell. Some of us do. Some of us don't. You know, the one thing that we got to be careful with, with praise and worship is there are two extreme, extremes here. You have the skeptic and then you have the sensationalist. We can't be either one. We can't be the sensationalist that every Sunday we have to jump and hit the rafters with our head. 
or be the skeptic that stands there and looks across the room and say, that's not right. God doesn't enjoy that. We can't be either one. We got to stay balanced and stay down the middle of the road. So what does the Bible say in the New Testament about worshiping God? It says in spirit and in truth. In John 4, 23, it reads, but the time is coming indeed. It's here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. See, if we, could, if we took everything I just taught you about the, why we clap our hands and why we raise our hands and why we jump, all that is backed up by biblical uh, uh, scriptures and, and, and by the Psalms, but that does not mean it's the only way to worship. That's where we get it wrong. We run, we take something and we create a doctrine out of it and we run down that road and we say, this is the only way. That's not how God is. If we worship God in spirit and truth, some of us can worship God with our hands in our pocket. Yes, the pastor just said that you could worship God with your hands in your pocket because it's in spirit and in truth. But there's the other side of that coin. It says, worship the Lord and let my soul Praise Him. My soul, that's where all your emotions are. So your emo you could cry. Sometimes you scream. Sometimes, you know, you, you have an emotion during worship. And that's okay too. See, worship is based on choice, not on your feelings. Yeah, sometimes jumping around and raising our hands and, and, and singing loud and screaming, it, it helps us feel better. But is that a choice? Or is that just something you're doing to feel better? Worship with everything that you have. Through Jesus, therefore, it says in Hebrews 13, 15, it says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. It's a sacrifice sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to come to church and we put our hands to our side and by the second or third song, we kind of put our hands up a little bit. You know, they say, well, no, you got to have your hands up all the way. Or no, you know, you got to hand your, and some people hold their hands up down here, which I'm not sure if that's holding your hands up or not, but, you know, to them it is. To them it is. Worship Him with everything you have. You know, the, the one commandment that Jesus demands that we follow is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. All, all, all. Worship Him with all that you have. Worship expecting God to respond. This is so good. We always worship God, uh, give, you know, expecting something to happen. It says in James 5, 8, Come close to God and God will come close to, do, to you. And in His presence, there is freedom. In, in His presence. So when we worship together and His presence comes down, there is freedom amongst, amongst the people. But let me finish, let me, let me conclude today by saying this. If you're Methodist, if you're Presbyterian, if you're Lutheran, if you sing out of a hymnal, if you raise your hands or clap your hands, or you don't raise your hands or clap your hands, some churches don't even have musical instruments. And we say, well, they're supposed to because the, the Bible says in Psalm 150, who says that they're not worshiping the Lord? We've chosen to take that Psalm 150 and say, we should have drums and we should have cymbals and we should have stringed instruments. Yes, it backs that up, but it doesn't say that that is the only way. We need to quit putting these things at, at, at such a higher level than others and, be, and understand that we could worship God many different ways. Many different ways. When Jesus answers the question to the Samaritan woman, she says, what bids me from going up there and worshiping? Do I have to go to Jerusalem? He says, oh no, you can worship anywhere you want. That was heresy back then because they were supposed to go to the temple to do that. And he told her, you could go up on that mountain and worship God. He was changing everything that day. And just in speaking to the Samaritan woman, he changed everything that day. So I want to encourage you, whatever you're at in your worship, uh, uh, wherever you're at in, in your church, if you worship with your hands up, if you worship with your hands down, if you clap, if you don't clap, if you have instruments or don't have instruments, listen, worship Him in spirit and in truth, right? Let your spirit reach Him and do it in truth. Sometimes it's a sacrifice, but don't fake it. Don't fake it till you make it, we say. Don't do that, but do it for real. 
Do it for real. Surrender yourself unto him. And he will receive, it says, your worship like fragrance to his nostrils. I hope this has blessed you today. And I'm doing my best to make these shorter. Next week, we're going to talk about the devil. I'm very excited about that one. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of different uh, uh, thoughts about who the devil is and what his powers are. So I'm going to do my best in a short time to clear that up for you and maybe you know, cause you to think differently about who he is and, and what he has rights to. So God bless you. We love you. I uh, hope you're enjoying these vlogs. Please respond, share if it's something that's blessing you so that others can be blessed also. Uh, uh, remember, we're New Life Bible Church, and uh, you're welcome here. And if you're not in our area in Orange City and you're not attending a church, find one church. You find a good church and get yourself uh, connected in the body of Christ. Love you. Take care. God bless.